Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the production of materials topic. Today we're going to have a quick look at the polymerization of ethylene. Now we need to go into this in a little bit of detail, so at the moment I just really want to introduce the whole idea of polymerization as a process, um, how it applies in general to the monomer ethene, and then we'll um, have a look in another um, in another video about how we actually produce the various forms of uh, uh, polyethylene, so LDPE and HDPE. For today though, I just want to have a quick look at uh, the process of polymerization. And when we previously looked at the reactions involving ethene, um, the last one that I talked about was the polymerization process, and it is the most widespread use of ethylene. Okay, the number of uh, polymers or plastics that are produced from ethene is immense and um, have a very far reaching impact socially uh, and economically. As a consequence, we need to understand this process in a little bit more detail. And the first thing we need to understand is that polymerization is a process in which we get a very large molecule from very much smaller molecules. The small molecules are called monomers, individual units, and the larger molecules are called polymers, um, poly many. So the important thing that we need to be aware of is the fact that the monomer units that we're going to be focusing on here is ethene or ethylene. And then the polymer is going to be polyethylene or polyethene. And we need many of these monomer units to form a single polymer. And these could run into the hundreds and thousands of uh, different monomers. So these are very long, very big, uh, large molecular weight compounds. Now, uh, the polymerization process actually can be divided into two distinct processes. The one that we're going to be looking at in this video is addition polymerization, but there's another one which we'll look at a little bit later in the course on condensation polymerization. Condensation, very simply, um, involves something like glucose units uh, being polymerized to form a long compound like cellulose, and the main difference is that there is a byproduct. Uh, which is water that is produced as a result of this process. But we are going to be focusing on addition polymerization, and that's where the monomer units link together without any loss. So there's no additional product. There's only one product in the polymerization process involving uh, addition polymerization. And that's the process that uh, we need to look at in uh, the polymerization of ethene. The important thing is that the fact that there is no loss means that usually we are breaking a double or a triple bond and just um, replacing that bond with two additional atoms so that there are two new bonds formed as a consequence. And then the uh, polymer grows in that way. To look then at the polymerization of ethylene, then basically what we have is uh, an ethene. So this is our monomer. And we represent this as n number, so uh, any number which can be a very large number. And what will happen is either through the use of a catalyst, uh, like a Ziegler natter, which I'll talk about later on, or sometimes just with the use of heat, or even an initiator, uh, which may be an organic peroxide, the double bond will open, and therefore it will provide two sites for potential linkage. Um, to this monomer. As a consequence, the um, poly chain will start to grow just by producing something which looks to all intents and purposes just like an alkane. So a very long chain carbon hydrogen compound with uh, only single bonds uh, between the carbons. So that's what our polymer is going to look like. Um, underneath, um, a little bit difficult to see here because I've just scribbled over the top of it, but you can see this is one of the representations that you can use um, in order to identify this reaction. So N lots of C2H4, which you can also show as a um, 
uh, as uh, a structural formula um, and lots of the little bond coming from the CH2, CH2, um, uh, and ultimately becoming our um, CH2, CH2 um, structure um, repeated n times and no losses. So this is basically what it looks like. So you can see each individual monomer, each of these are monomers, and they are growing and adding to our little chain um, by breaking the double bond and linking into the end of the growing chain. So we've got a, a little site here, which is going to um, be able to uh, bond as this bond over here breaks. So this one here will break and uh, we'll have this next monomer linking in to the growing chain. So here is our growing polymer. And they just form from that whole process of monomers joining together to form long chains. Now, one of the things that we'll see in the next video is that there are two main types of polyethylene. And partly that's because sometimes, such as in high density, that chain just grows um, in a nice, neat, straight line. Uh, no branching, no side chains, or very few. And that forms a type of polyethylene called high density polyethylene, or HDPE. However, a different process will produce a more branching compound, and that has both a different structure and also different properties. And that is our low density polyethylene. And we'll have a look at each of those in a little bit more detail in the next video. Thanks for watching.